So let's talk safety. Safety first. Before you start melting molten metal, if you plan on staring at the core of your metal while you're stirring, you're gonna want safety glasses. I prefer a level five shade. Depending on your eyesight, you may want a level three, but what you don't want is when you're wearing your eye protection for your eyes to hurt from looking at the light. This is just like staring at a computer screen. If your eyes are hurting, it is too bright for your eyes and you need eye protection or a break. So our, our crucible is preheated. We're gonna add our metal, and this is a mix of recycle and fresh pine. And so we will have to do all the alloying again. So we're going to light our torch one more time. Get a nice bushy flame to the point where the acetylene is still on the torch head. If you go this far, Settling is jumping off the edge. We want to go back to where it's stable. And we're going to turn our oxygen up until the cones, the little blue cones, are about two to three inches in front of the torch head. Now the ventilation is on and has been on for the last 24 hours of burnout. And you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you have adequate ventilation, okay? You can see that there's flame coming out of the mouth of the crucible. And then just nudge those together, making sure everything is heated. Turn my oxygen down. There we go. We want a reducing flame, just slightly reducing. So I'm lengthening my cone. When you first light up the torch, Sometimes a little bit of atmosphere or oxygen needs to bleed out and you'll have this variance in uniform flow of your torch head. But ultimately, what you want to see are nice clean cones. They're not changing in size. There's not a lot of soot coming off your flame. And the flame itself is captured outside of the crucible. So it bounces in the bottom to heat everything up and just a little bit of cover flame is coming out of the crucible and that's making sure that the metal itself isn't burning, right? There's not any oxygen present in the atmosphere for the metal to burn. If the metal burns, it makes it a little harder to get your flow dynamics right and then there's a lot of pickling and scrubbing to get your metal back to shiny. Right now the metal is molten, but we want to make sure since we're alloying that everything is uniformly melted. We don't want that orange creamsicle swirl. So again, what we're doing is just stirring it and stirring it. And if there feels like there's any solid chunks, we're going to stir it some more. Now that the metal is uniform and glossy, I'm going to turn my oxygen down just a little bit, give it some extra reduction. I'm going to stir it one more time to make sure that there's nothing that I've missed. We've got uniform flow. You can see that the flame is going into the flask. Everything is lined up and we're ready to go. Now this is the tricky part. You've got your cover flame on, your metal's fully reduced, you're ready to cast, and now what you have to do is 
set down your stirring rod, right? Everything's ready to go. You set down your stirring rod. You're going to grab the arm. Now there is a lot of spring force on this arm, so you're going to pull it towards yourself, or clockwise in this case, and you wait to hear that pin drop. If the pin doesn't drop, you need to bump it with the arm or have an assistant help. And then, when you're ready, you're gonna count to three, yell casting, and let it go. So three, two, one, casting. You do not need to move your torch. You can leave it right where it is, and then turn the oxygen off. Turn the acetylene off. You're just gonna wait for the centrifuge to spin down. This will take some time. And of course, you don't wanna stop it prematurely because the fulcrum arm, when the arm itself breaks at a 90 degree angle, that's the three Gs of force that gives you all of the extra push that you get in centripetal casting. And this spinning moment where it's continually rotating is merely to prevent gravity from pulling that molten metal back out of the casting while it goes from a liquid state to a solid state, right? So those crystals are forming. You want a uniform pressure to keep them pushed into the mold and not have them pull back out as the metal is curing. Right? You want that metal to finish its crystal structure, you want it to solidify, you want it to become one uniform body, you don't want any slag breaks, you don't want any cold chokes, you don't want your button to pour out, you just want a nice uniform part. So when it spins down to a nice slow spin, then you can reach in, you can grab your part and set it down to cool. So we're going to grab the sled and pull that back. And then we're going to grab our part. And then you want to make sure you have a good grip. And then the camera won't pick it up very well, but this is radiating a little bit of color. It's a light red. And one thing you want to consider is if it's radiating any color, you know that your part is at the point of instant ignition, meaning that if you set your part down, you can see that it goes through a reduction and it's burning the paper. So I'm gonna pull it off, and you can see that reduction. Pull off, reduction. And it will actually ignite the paper fairly quickly if you just leave it there. So you do wanna make sure to let this cool down until it's no longer glowing any color. And so you'll shade it with your hand to see whether there's any color. And then at that point, it will be cool enough to quench.